Hey everyone, Greg Albrecht here. I want to walk you through how to get Node Red set up and installed on Windows, along with getting the Node TAC nodes installed, letting you view TAC data in Node Red on Windows. What you can see on the screen right now is ATAC running on one of my phones. So we'll throw that aside for now and we'll go to our Windows machine in the background. If we open a web browser and we go to Node Red Windows, we can actually see that there's a guide here for installing Node Red on Windows. And the first thing they have you do is install Node.js itself. Now the recommended version of Node.js for Node Red is 14, but we're gonna live dangerously and install Node 16 here. So we go ahead and download that, and then once it's download, we fire it up, we hit next, sounds good, next, next, next. And this is an optional build step, uh, we can bypass that for now. We'll hit next and install. Yes. And hit finish. Now that that's installed, we should be able to fire up a PowerShell or command prompt and type node version and npm version. And that shows us that it's actually installed. So if we go back to the tutorial here, once we've installed node and npm, we want to install node red itself. So we'll just cargo cult this command line here, bring it over and run the install for that. Now this might take a couple minutes, and now's a good chance to catch up on expense reports or have a coffee. All right, looks like it's installed. So the next thing we do is we start Node Red. We can see we just typed Node Red there and fired it off. Um, if you happen to get an error about a uh, running scripts in the terminal, there is a little command you can run here in the terminal up on your screen, and that will get rid of the error message you get the first time you try to run Node Red. And if you get a command not found, just kill your PowerShell and come back in. You should be good to go. So once we've started Node Red in Windows, you can see it says it's accessible there. So if we open up a web browser and we go there, You can see we're into Node Red. Uh, right now our canvas is empty. Um, you can see all the optional nodes that are here on the left. What we're going to want to do is we're going to install the TAC nodes. We do that by clicking on the sandwich icon, going to Manage Palette, click Install, and we'll search for TAC. And we want to install Node Red Contrib TAC, and we'll install that by clicking Install. You can see we already have it installed on our example here. And then the other thing we we'll want to install is world map. Let's type world map and we'll install node red contrib web world map. And we would click install there. Once they're installed, they'll show up here on our left. You can see we have contrib tac and contrib web world map. Close out of there. So let's pull in a world map. First thing we'll do and we'll decide what URL we want that world map to be at. So the default, the default is slash world map, so we'll just stick with that. Next thing we're going to want to do is put a serializer in front of that. So tack to world map is going to take incoming tack in any format, uh, cursor on target XML, protobuf, and convert it to a format that world map understands. So we're going to connect those two nodes with a line, and then Let's throw a debug in here just so we can see the messages coming across the wire. And then finally, we're going to try to look at multicast traffic. So this would be ATAC mesh traffic that it sends out to multicast. We'll pull in a UDP node, double click it, and then for listen for, we're going to change that to multicast messages. And we'll put in our multicast group for ATAC. That's 239.231. And 
and our port is going to be 6969. Everything else we can leave the same. We'll save that, and the last thing we'll do is we'll connect up our UDP to our TAC to world map and debug just so we can see the output. And once I hit deploy, we should start seeing multicast messages come across. Great. And there you can see right now, we've already gotten messages coming across. Now these are in a buffer format, which isn't going to be human readable. Uh, they're in protobuf format. So that's why we have the tac to world map serializer here. So if you recall, the URL we hit for world map was slash world map. So now if we open a new tab, and we're going to go to our Node-RED instance again, but we're going to specify a URL there. So we're going to put in slash world map. And by default, the world map zooms in on an area of London here. Uh, you could change that in the world map settings, but if we zoom out, zoom way out, what you can see over here in California, uh, all the nodes I have in my house, including my ATAC device we saw earlier, are now showing up on the map via their multicast broadcast. Now, this isn't going to work for multicast if you've disabled mesh support in ATAC or if you've changed your default multicast group or port. But you can see I've got two devices here. I've got a tablet running ATAC and a phone running ATAC. Uh, the phone is in the group cyan, so that's why it's this color, and the tablet is in group blue. And if we click on it, we can see some information from the cot that came across. Now we're not just restricted to multicast. If you want to connect to a TAC server, we can do that here as well. We just pull in the TCP node. We want to connect to a port. I'll put the TLS port here. And we'll put in the, the host name or IP of our TAC server. And if we're running TLS, we'll select TLS here. We'll add a new config. And here's where we would upload a PEM version, that's P-E-M, plain text, version of our certificate, or an ASCII version of our certificate, rather, and a PEM version of our private key that were, was generated on the TAC server. Um, if you've used a passphrase, you can set your passphrase here. Um, and if you want to use CA certificates or verify server certificates, you can specify that here. I typically leave this unchecked, but your mileage may vary. But same deal, you would put that information in here. And then once you've specified that, you would just connect up this TCP to your TAC to world map, and you would see that the same data appear on your world map here. Once you've done all that, make sure you hit deploy, and you should be good to go. Thanks.